In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. A most blessed feast of the ascension of our Lord into heaven uh, to all of you. For anyone that still might, still might be at the level of catechism, Ascension Thursday is always on a Thursday, just as Easter is always on a Sunday. So um, it will always be on a Thursday. And that's a blessing and a grace as well, because Thursday is the same day as the institution of the Holy Eucharist. And as we might see in this sermon, it's also the day that our Lord took on the devil, so to speak, in his um, passion, bloody, the sweaty, the bloody sweat that our Lord suffered on the night of his passion is in the same place that he uh, actually ascended to his father, Mount Olivet. So uh, the main thing and the main theme that we're celebrating today is that our Lord is completely victorious on this day. He ascends to his father in heaven as a reward for his faithfulness to his Father in heaven. And his faithfulness would have been especially during the passion, during the crucifixion, during all the sufferings he went through in order to redeem us. Our Lord was being obedient to his Father. He's being resigned to his Father's will. He was making the greatest act of love that will ever be made, which is the complete sacrifice of himself, of himself out of love for his Father, which in turn means out of love for us. So as a reward for all of his faithfulness, our Lord ascends into heaven on this day, and he's victorious. Now, something very important to remember is that we are part of our Lord. We belong to his mystical body. He is the head of the body. We are his members. In a certain way, we're kind of already in heaven with him. Uh, we are victorious on this day. He's the first member of our family that has already ascended into heaven. He's the firstborn of all creatures. And he has won our redemption on the cross. We are the first fruits of all of his sufferings. Somehow we have ascended with our Lord on this day. He's victorious and we are victorious. We're just waiting for all of us to live out very faithfully our Catholic lives so that we can join him forever in heaven. But really, in a certain way, we're, we're already written in a book with our Lord as belonging to his family. We should logically arrive in heaven with him. Now, uh, Father Gomes said something very fundamental, very useful in uh, his sermons this morning, speaking about the particular judgment when we all arrive before our Lord in heaven someday. Uh, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. Uh, our Lord will ask us a simple question, and that would be, do you love me? And I think any of us would be crazy if we're going to answer on that day, well, no, no, I don't love you. I don't think anyone's going to have the courage to say such a thing. No, I don't love you. Uh, but if our Lord continues to ask us, and he will, he will, say, he will say, have you loved me throughout your life? And that's where it might start to get a little bit complicated for us. Because uh, have you loved me? will mean, have you tried to live in my grace? Have you preferred me to the world? Have you preferred me towards your, instead of your evil tendencies? Have you tried to live in my sanctification? Have you tried to live in my grace? In a word, have you loved me? And that might be a little bit difficult for us to answer. Uh, yes, I do love you, but there are some times where the this, this situations you just mentioned, I have not loved you. And you know, my faithful, that's where all of us really need to work. Of course we love our Lord. Of course we love his mother. We love his church. We have everything that has to do with our Lord. But we have to show that love for our Lord by constantly renouncing the world and constantly renouncing our evil tendencies and our pride and our ego. We have to renounce those things in order to really love our Lord. One of the things that our Lord said while he was having the last repast with his disciples on this day, 120 disciples, our Blessed Mother, and the Holy Women, one of the things he said was, 
you're going, to go, you're going to go now. You're going to preach to all nations, and you're going to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. And he added, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. He who does not believe shall be condemned. Our Lord spoke quite clearly. It's all black and white. There's no existential interpretation of the words that he might have meant to say. No, it's all quite clear. Do not believe and baptize, you're saved. Not believed, you go to hell. That's the end of how, that's how our Lord makes it. And there again, all of us should do some self-examination because yes, I believe and yes, I've been baptized, but perhaps by not loving my Lord when the world makes its invitations to me, by not loving our Lord for not fighting against my evil tendencies, by not loving my Lord for receiving the sacraments regularly and worthily, I'm kind of putting myself in that camp of the people who do not believe. Because if I did believe, I would act on that belief. But when we behave as if sacraments are kind of a neutral issue and obeying God's law is a neutral issue and following the world or not following the world is a neutral issue. When I do that, I'm not really loving God and I might not even be believing God. So all of us need to take that seriously. Those were parting words of our Lord to his disciples and apostles. And you know that when a man leaves to go to the next life, everything he says is you know, multiplied in value compared to what he has said during his whole life. So our Lord left the cynical. Cynical is the, the upper room, the same room that the disciples, the apostles, used with our Lord for the Last Supper. That's where our Lord was having this last repast with them. And they left the upper room, the cynical, and they came down from the Mount, Mount Sion, which is inside of Jerusalem, and they walked towards the eastern gate of the city. And curious, the 120 disciples and Our Lady and the Holy Women walked with our Lord and spoke with our Lord as, he accompanied, or as they accompanied him to the eastern gate of the city. And they saw him and recognized him and it was all very visible. But he was invisible to everyone that belonged to the faithless city of Jerusalem. Our, only, our Lord only made himself known to the people who believed in him during his life. So as they come to Mount Olivet, uh, remember this is the same mountain, the same area, where is the Garden of Gethsemane. They cross the brook Chedron, which is the same brook that our Lord ca crossed on the night of Holy Thursday in order to go to his agony. And now all of these are signs of victory for our Lord. He has pass through this suffering at these very places. And because he was able to pass through suffering, resignation to his Father's will, obedience to his Father's will, being humbled in front of his Father, because he was able to pass through that suffering at those places, these, this will be the place where he will go through his greatest victory, rising to his Father in heaven. We might ask, what are the sentiments and what are the thoughts of our Blessed Mother? Does she have sadness at losing her son? Does she have joy at his victory? And the answer is, Our Lady obviously has joy at the victory of her son, because he himself told his disciples on the night of the Last Supper, if ye loved me, um, if ye loved me, ye would indeed, you would indeed be glad, because I go to the Father. The ones who love our Lord are happy for him that he's going to the Father. And who loves our Lord more than his own mother, our lady? She loves him. She's happy for him. She's proud of him. Even though it will be great suffering for her to remain on earth another 16 years or something like that, guiding the infant church, our lady is happy for her son that he's moving on to heaven. And that's a reflection for the apostles, and that's a reflection for us. The apostles might have been very sad to see our Lord go, but they take the example from our Blessed Mother. If she's happy that he goes to his victory, then who are we not to be happy? 
we are happy for his victory. And more than that, uh, because we're happy for his victory, we're going to do everything possible to make him known to all the rest of men out of our happiness for him and happiness for his victory. As they were nearing the top of Mount Olivet, uh, the disciples were able to look off the right-hand side of this mountain and see the city of Jerusalem. And that inspired one of them to say, or several of them perhaps, to make the remark, uh, Dear Lord, is this the hour that you're going to restore Israel? Which means something like, uh, we see the glorious city of Israel, can you now flee, uh, free us from the Romans? And for our divine Lord, you know, this question is completely uh, irrelevant, irrelevant. He's been working so hard to give them supernatural life, to give them grace, to tell them, preach this life of grace to all creatures. Uh, don't think about yourselves. Think about my divinity. I'll give you what you need to say as soon as you receive the Holy Spirit. So our Lord has been giving them all this supernatural instruction, inspiring them, trying to make them men that will do anything for his divinity. And someone or some ones ask this question that, which is completely irrelevant. Are you going to give Israel back its power at this time? And our Lord's answer is somewhat severe. He says, gentlemen, you are not to know these things. That belongs to my father. But not go now and be witnesses to the whole pagan world. Don't be worrying about Jerusalem. Don't be worrying about the temple anymore. That chapter is closed. Let's go on now and move to the pagan world. You must, you must establish my church. And our Lord gives them his last blessing. He looks at his mother and ascends into heaven. As you know, a, there was very quickly after that, an apparition of two angels that said to the apostles, why do you look up into heaven? He shall return the same way as you have seen him going. You have seen him going as the savior. You will see him return someday as the judge. But in between this time of Savior of all believers, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the time of the judge coming back to judge the whole world, we have to make the whole life of the church. It's as if the angel said, apostles, disciples, mother of God, holy women, all of you have been redeemed by following our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh. You have seen his miracles, you've heard his preaching, you've been inspired, you're convinced of his divinity, and you're about 120 people. What about all the millions and millions of other people that exist and will exist until the time that Christ is gonna come back as a judge? You know what? That befalls you. All of you will have to make known his divinity. And even God, our Lord Jesus Christ, is going to give you power to work miracles so you can show the divinity of Christ also through what you say and what you do. But before he comes back as judge, everyone who lives on this earth, everyone who's going to live on this earth, is going to have the same opportunity as you had to receive the Son of God. And that, my friends, is the church. That is the life of the church, and we're still in it almost 2,000 years later. Everyone is going to be given a chance to benefit from the redemption of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, my dear faithful, we have great joy for our Lord Jesus Christ on this day of his victory, the victory of our Master, our Lord Jesus Christ. We have great joy for this last of all the mysteries of his redemption. We're inspired by the Blessed Mother, by our Blessed Mother, to be joyful for him, but also to have an attitude of doing everything we can to make his church prosper in his life. And all of us have to consider how it will be when we see our Lord Jesus Christ after being his faithful ministers in this life, 
if we'll be able to say that we love him because we've avoided the world. We love him because we fought against our evil tendencies. We love him because we've received the sacraments. And we love him because we've lived in his sanctification. Hopefully all of us can say yes to those four questions. And we will say it on the day when we are received at the particular judgment before our Lord Jesus Christ, who is victorious. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.